Hashtag LL8, hashtag write the bill. Millions of Americans ask for a standalone bill for an extension of FPUC. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoons LA Late. I'm LA Late, and hope you're good and safe. This is our two hour programming block that starts every day at 2 30, starts with a check, then goes to Hazard Pay, then FUC, and finally Rent Eviction Moratorium. Really exciting and great news overnight about the extension of LWA, well, PUF, PUC now called LWA. As this channel uh, initiated a call to action to have a standalone bill for extension of LW, of FPUC. It came earlier today, if you didn't see it, I tweeted Steve Scalise, the Republican senator who I greatly admire, and asked that a standalone bill be done. I offered to write three standalone bills, one for the check, one for extension of FPUC, and one for rent eviction moratorium, on behalf of the Democrats to negotiate with a leading Republican senator and have him or her introduce it to the Senate tomorrow and get this done without the need of Nancy and Chuck. Let me get to right to the details of where FPUC needs to land and where are the negotiations on FPUC. As millions of Americans are very confused, especially because their governors, ironically, both Republicans and Democrats, have said some things really sort of not correct in the last two days as some wonderful wind comes in because I am literally dying on set. It's so freaking ass hot here today. Um, so give me some likes to this video because boy, I am struggling through this heat. Um, but thank God for the wind. First, FPUC was that $600 for a week, per week that expired under the CARES Act in late July. Meaning, meaning, and this is very important, that weeks that you are unemployed after then would not get $600 a week. But if you applied for or applying or still processing for weeks at issue from March to July under the CARES Act, you would still get the $600 a week. Let me make this very clear. The fact that FPUC is no longer paid after July at $600 a week does not mean you're not going to get those weeks from March to July now. It means that you're not going to get the weeks after that, uh, after that prescribed date. So a lot of you have pending claims to if you, they're on employment office for UI or PUA, you're gonna get the $600 a week um, for that March to July. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I had one viewer, I gotta say this, I gotta always say this because I seem to, I always have a viewer that's like, oh no, I didn't do this. Uh, you need to indicate the correct impact date. So if your impact date because of COVID-19 was in March, that you uh, applied for UI or PUA, you need to list March, not August. And that viewer list August, because he had not watched my video, and he's like, yeah, how could I change it to March? I'm like, you gotta call and be on hold for the next 55 years. It's literally, a thou it's literally like a $10,000 error because it's gonna be 24 weeks or something like that times $800. It's just an enormous monetary mistake if you don't list the correct date of impact. All right, let me go forward. So FPUC, um, my call to action, my call to action on write the bill was an offer to the Republicans, an opening offer, $550 per week under a sunset provision. $550. Why did it come up with $550? The Democrat plan, which is the HEROES Act, um, calls for $600. Mitch initially started with $200. Then, uh, then he went to 300, then they went to 400, the Republicans, and there's been a lot of talk about numbers, but there hasn't been a lot of bills about these various different numbers. About two weeks ago, the president introduced LWA by executive order, which created, in a way, an extension of FPUC, but it has not been, uh, it's not gonna be able to last the duration. Why? It costs $300 per week, and then $100 per week can be added by the states. Three states, as of today, I believe, have now agreed to pay the $100 per week. They are um, Montana, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Now, um, 
LWA is just really a beacon for incorrect information. I mean, it's just like, you know, there's more incorrect stories than gossip in the Big Brother house when it comes to LWA. I mean, Governor Abbott out of Texas is literally like the, 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 the kingpin of incorrect information about LWA. Let me explain what's going on. And I'm not here to become FEMA. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the spokesperson for FEMA. I'm just reporting what FEMA says. FEMA said over a week ago that there's not more than three weeks of funds available for states. And at that time, they said, we are going to have enough funds to pay the first few states that get approved. And that was about three or four states. And they said thereafter, when we were at about five to eight states approved, they said, we may not have even three weeks for five to eight states. You follow me so far? So when we weren't even at 10 states approved, FEMA made clear, we're paying the first states that are approved in order, three weeks. Arizona's first. We'll pay Arizona three weeks. They paid Arizona. Arizona's already paid their citizens. Uh, FEMA says we're paying the first states approved first. And when they said they were at a few states, they said, you know, we have enough for three weeks for those first few states. After that, we don't have anything else. Then when we were at about five to ten, they said we have money for a couple more states, but we don't have enough to get to three to get to three weeks. That was when we were we were not even at 10 states. Now we have Governor Abbott and some other states that come in and say, hey, you know, here I am, I'm late for the party. Uh, I, you know, I was brushing my teeth and still combing my hair. Uh, here I am, I'm state number 35 or 45, and I'd like some of that money. And then, and then which is fine, I mean, and, and FEMA says, okay, approved. Then the governors, these governors issue press statements, hey, you're gonna get $300 a week for three weeks? Untrue. I mean, that's just not what FEMA has said. There's not enough money for you. You're behind all these other states in front of you that may not get money at all. And then they actually have the audacity, Governor Abbott actually had the audacity to say the money's gonna land in your bank accounts next week. No, FEMA has said that states that were, you know, not even at eight or nine or 10 would get the money in September. So I don't, it's just, you know, it's, it's really disconcerting that a governor has to just be so uh, just untruthful to his own citizens. But that's where we are. And, you know, if you don't want to believe me, then just, you know, subscribe to, to the FEMA channel and just watch FEMA news 24 hours a day and get their press releases. I mean, it's a little bit boring, but that's what they're reporting. So when we turn back to the call to action, you know, my call to action was offering 550 a week because, uh, Nancy offered 600 Republicans, you know, ended about 400. Let's get this done. Here is, and then I put in the sunset provision. Here is the sunset provision. The sunset provision was that FPUC should expire uh, after three consecutive weeks of, of jobless claims at 500,000 or, um, or less, or an end of the pandemic. Why? You have to have an expiration date to FPUC that's tied to economics. Nancy's bill is that's tied to January. It's like a little ridiculous. It's, it's either too optimistic or too, uh, too pessimistic. First of all, it doesn't work, <laughs> you know. Jobless claims are still at a million all the way into February of next year. Then she's screwed. Then what's she gonna do, come back and do this again? Um, if, you know, jobless claims just really improve by November, December, what is she gonna still say, pay us money all the way to January? So it doesn't make sense. You have to have a sunset provision. That sunset provision needs to be applied to economics. And economics is the jobless claims release every Thursday. As you, you know, you, you subscribe to this channel. You go to the front of the channel, and you subscribe and you I follow the alert. You, you see my stories every Thursday morning, which is new jobless claims announced. New jobless claims are announced every Thursday in this country. It announces the number of new jobless claims for people who newly, newly went on unemployment benefits that week as the heat really picks up. It's so damn hot out here. Uh, and so this in indicates how many people just started unemployment this week. And before the pandemic, we were at 200,000. Great number, great, great, great number before the pandemic started. 200,000 new jobless claims per week. Then as soon as the pandemic hit, bam, went to 1 million. 20 something weeks of 1 million. The longest run over 1 million since the Great Depression. Two weeks ago, improvement dropped to 900,000. Last week, analysts thought it was gonna get even better. It didn't, it went the other way. It went to like 1.1 million approximately. So, I mean, we have to have this tied to economics. Sunset should be 
three consecutive weeks of 500,000 or less, or a pandemic settles down, whichever is better. Next, here's the numbers, the numbers issue. Nancy calls her negotiations strategic negotiations. It doesn't work when you're talking about unemployment benefits. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> if you are a husband and wife, and only one of you works, let's make this very simple, one of you works, she works, and he stays home, uh, and she got laid off, she has to go on unemployment benefits, and suddenly she doesn't get FPUC. Okay, suddenly she's not getting $600 a week. She's not getting, she's getting her base level benefits, which in her state, let's say it's California, it's like 167 That's not going to pay for her and her husband. It's not going to, it's not going to cut it. She needs that $600 a week. So Nancy's in the room staying there and saying, uh, it's strategically best for me to hold out. How long do you think strategically it makes sense for you to hold out for that husband and wife, Nancy? They have savings, maybe. Maybe they got $10,000 in the bank. Okay, after a week of you holding out, it's going to go to zero, or two weeks, it's going to go to zero. Then, after you know three weeks of you holding out, they can't make the water bill, the electric bill, um, the water and gas is getting turned off. Four weeks, you're strategically holding out. Um, the repo guy is going to come and take the car. They can't make the lease payments. Five weeks, you're holding out. They're getting eviction, more, they're getting eviction notices. Six weeks, you're holding out. You see where this is going? Let me do the other side of the scenario. So Steve Mnuchin, let's say, is in the room, and he says $400 to Nancy, and she says no. Well, at $400, had that husband and wife had the $400, they would have um, still had water, gas, electric, and not been evicted, not have lost a car, and would have had money to put on the table. It would not have been as much as they wanted. It would have been $200 less than what Nancy's doing, but they would not been in a financial bind yet. $400. The next week, another $400. Okay, now they have $800. Well, they're up $800. Three weeks, let's add another $400. They're up $1,200. Another week, they're up $1,600. So if we do four weeks of this, four weeks of Steve doing $400 negotiations, this couple family could have had $1,600 in their bank account. Four weeks of Nancy not doing a deal, this family has zero. Zero versus $1,600. We all understand what the implication is for a family of two that went from no employment, from employment to no employment, but suddenly has $1,600 in the bank account after four weeks versus zero. That's why you can't negotiate with people's lives. You can't, and when we're talking about unemployment benefits, it's not like stimulus checks. Stimulus checks is... You know, it's hard to say these things because everyone has an opinion about what they need, and I got to be very sensitive to it to you. But when we're talking about employment, people who were employed operated their financial livelihood based upon that check. That check. That husband and wife ran their life, their household, based upon that check she would get every week. They don't have that check now. So every week that they don't have that check and every week that they don't have FPUC, they're closer and closer to being on the street until finally after a few weeks, they're on the street. That's why it doesn't make financial, economic, socioeconomic, or political sense to cause people to sit back and eventually become homeless because you want to hold out for $200 more per week. It doesn't. Let me do something even more um, pessimistic, or it's not pessimistic, more um, analytical about the situation. You know, we're here in, what, August? Uh, FPUC just expired a few weeks ago. You know, we're not even including the retroactive benefits. The couple would get the retroactive benefits as well. You know, three weeks back, because what is it since it expired, like three weeks? So they would get 300 three times, let's use Steve's number, three times 400, they get $1,200 retroactive on top of their $1,600. So they would have like $2,800 by the end of this month if, if, if Nancy agreed to $400 stimulus, uh, $400 standalone uh, bill at $400. They would get $2,800 right now. Right now, imagine a, a couple that has literally, you know, on the uh, one door, one foot almost out the door, homeless, getting twenty eight hundred dollars. Imagine how that just turns their life around. 
because they have those retroactive benefits still pending because, you know, states like Governor Abbott tells them they're going to get checks once they're, they're not. They're gonna, checks are going to come in three months from now. It's incredibly helpful. It's incredibly helpful. Now, let me tell you something else which people don't really discuss, and this is so important. I mean, when do we think this pandemic's going to end? When do we think it's going to settle down? January? I mean, Nancy's own data talks about January. Okay, so this is September, coming up September, October, November, December. Four months. We're really negotiating over four months with Steve for FPUC. I mean, you want to throw in August, maybe it's five months. Let's just do four months for this purpose of making this video simple. Four months FPUC extension. Um, times four weeks, 16 weeks, 16 weeks. We're arguing over 16 weeks for $200. So 16 weeks at $600, well, let me do this way. <laughs> 16 weeks with zero for Nancy or 16 weeks at 400 for Steve. Okay, what, we're a difference of $200 between Nancy and Steve. What's $200 times 16 weeks? It's not a lot of money. I mean, you're saving people's livelihood for 16 weeks at 400 to 500 to 450. Hence, that's why I offered 550. I mean, it's just like, let's get it done. Let's get these Americans their 16 weeks of benefits from now to, um, to December 31st and their retroactive benefits. Imagine if your video, if you are, if you are watching this channel and you follow my math, because I know I do this very quickly. You follow my math, and you're like, hey, he's talking right. He's like, you know, we go back three weeks of FPUC we're entitled to. We're waiting for those. Um, so that's, you know, 400 times three weeks. That's $1,200 right today if the deal was done today. Then we got, you know, we're going to get three more weeks for this month. That's a three more weeks. And then we got all the way to December. We're going to be fine. We'll be fine under what LA is talking about because we got 16, 18 weeks of $400 a week under Steve Mnuchin's plan. And LA is saying do 550, but just trying to figure out how to get this done. Whereas the other woman wants you to wait to January on nothing. Nothing for 16 weeks. Uh, go to the front of this channel and hit the subscribe and alert button. I mean, if there's ever a time to hit the subscribe and alert button, it is now. Uh, I've survived today's recording, hopefully, because of this heat. And um, I survived with you and you survived with me. We, I thank you for last week. We reached 200,000 subscribers, which no one has ever done in the history of YouTube. Uh, 111 days, 118 days, approximately. I mean, it's what? three and a half months. Our goal now is to add 25,000 subscribers in the two weeks from yesterday. So I think we're already on path. We've done 8,000, I think, since Saturday. So let's keep it up. Let's keep it up. Let's keep on going. Coming up next is Rent-A-Fiction Moratorium, which is just, you know, another easy video, but <laughs> not when you're dealing with Nancy Pelosi. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay smiling, and stay with LA.